and consequently the observance of Muslim feast like the night of power locally called Laylatul Qadr, Tobaski and Karite. The arguments normally result in a blame game between the highly educated scholars from the Arab world and those who have locally acquired their Islamic knowledge from traditional educational institutions known as Majlis. The deadlock between these two sets of religious leaders according to the Supreme Islamic Council must be broken if there is to be any chance for the growth of a unified Islamic Ummah. They therefore employed the three-pronged approaches of dialogue, discussions and intellectual debates to achieve this objective. The first four days of the tour took the Supreme Islamic Council delegation to different villages in the North Bank and Central River regions. In Kerouan, where proceedings began, Governor Edward II pledged his region's support to the Council, suggesting that with the necessary logistics and communication facilities, activities of the Council will gain prominence in NBR. The President of the Council, Muhammad Lamin Ture, challenged Muslims to cultivate and nurture the idea that the Gambia Supreme Islamic Council belongs entirely to them. He added that the executive committee, headed by himself as the president, is only a body of trustees tasked with the huge and sensitive duty of steering the affairs of Muslims. He went on to say that all the decisions made on the council follow extensive research by a 50-member committee of learned scholars. Imam Ture believes such an explanation is enough to what he called the unwarranted and baseless division perpetrated by people who ironically took part in the Congress that elected them into office. He told the Guardian that news of the moon being seen in any Muslim country as obtained from the holy books is enough a justification for the Muslim world to either begin fasting or celebrate feast. Similar words of wisdom came from Sheikh Ibrahim Jeju and Dr. Mbai Kebaka, who made it crystal clear that the council cannot afford to mislead Muslims as they are not paid a pittance for their services. But contrary to a widely held belief, they have to depend on the generosity of the president and their own monthly contributions to keep the council operational. Various speakers representing the locals took turns to express their gratitude for the opportunity, describing it as long overdue. They added that with periodic dialogue and sensitization forums of this nature, problems that usually mar Islamic feast will soon be consigned to history. Following the opening ceremony in Karawan, the Supreme Islamic Council delegation went on out in Sundugu Kebe, Sambakala, Darus Salam, Salikanye, Mintakunda, Daru Ridwan, and the Upper Badibu town of Farafenye, where they held fruitful discussions with religious leaders, scholars, and local authorities. In CRR, meetings started in Janjamburi. This tour of the Gambia Supreme Islamic Council has been organized in a way that it targets scholars, heads of madrasas, and others who have become renowned in Islam in all over the country. A meeting has just been held at the governor's residence in Janjamburi. The delegation is now heading to different communities in this region to sensitize them on matters related to the work of the council. During ensuing discussions in Kaur and Brikamaba, Dr. Mbai Kebaka, the Supreme Islamic Council Secretary, told the gathering that the council is open to divergent views and dissenting opinion, but this, he added, should be sorted with council members behind closed doors in order to uphold unity in Islam. From the North Bank region to the Central River region, meetings were not devoid of arguments. For one thing is clear, the mission to make people abandon deep-rooted practices the authenticity of which sometimes beg for answers is undoubtedly an uphill task. Modulamin Sise, GRTS.